and thank you for joining me. This is my very first live on Instagram. So I just wanted to come to you and share with you three autumn yoni care tips. So today we're gonna to be talking about shadow work. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dominique Danielle and I am the founder of Holistic Yoni Care and my mission is to foster nourishing spaces where women can connect, gather, heal and thrive as a collective. And so as a provider of certified crystal yoni eggs and yoni steam herbal blends, my goal is really to help women foster a more intimate connection with their own bodies so that they experience more confidence and a greater sense of pleasure overall, not just in the bedroom. So today, as I said, we're gonna be talking about three autumn yoni care tips. In particular, we're diving into shadow work because it is the fall. If you are in the Northern Hemisphere, the weather's getting colder, the leaves are starting to turn yellow, maybe red, and we are moving deeper into the fall. Some of them call it the dark times. And this is really where the veil between the, the world of the seen and the known and the more conscious light part of our awareness is thinning between that part of our awareness and the unknown, the realm of the dark, the unseen. And so shadow work, for those of you who don't know, is something that we do all of the time throughout the year, but this is just a really powerful time to really do a deep dive because it can help us to reconcile those parts of ourselves that may be suppressed and so that we can live a more full expression of who and what we are. So I'm going to share with you what shadow work is, what the shadow is from both the masculine and the feminine perspective. So for the masculine perspective, I'm going to go with Carl Jung, who was a well-known psychologist and so many other things uh, way back in the day. And Carl Jung talked about how the shadow is those parts of the personality that are somehow rejected because of fear, ignorance, a lack of love or shame. And so this usually happens sometime earlier in life and kind of we carry that shadow of that experience throughout our lives. Now, this doesn't mean that these things are hard and fixed in the personality. It just means that these are things that we may not be consciously aware of. And so the goal, according to Carl Jung, the goal of shadow work is really to integrate those parts of ourselves and to rediscover them so that we can heal and experience a deeper level of spiritual awareness, a sense of connection and meaningfulness. And this is relevant to yoni care because we as women hold our entire subconscious for the most part in our yoni. We carry a lot of the memories of any type of sh shame, guilt, trauma, stress, all of that we store around the hip area, in our wombs, in our yoni. And so if we are unaware of what these things are, of course, over time, they can manifest into a more physical expression in our life. And this can show up in our bodies, this can show up in our relationships, um, in our personality, the way we interact with other people, our finances, and you name it. So we want to make sure that we know as much as we can about ourselves so that when we set a wellness intention to move forward, we can do that holistically in a way that honors the physical body, the emotions, the mind, and the spirit. So now I'm going to share with you the feminine perspective of what shadow work is. And this is coming from Debbie Ford's book, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. Debbie Ford, unfortunately, is no longer with us. She passed on a few years ago, but she wrote this amazing book uh, many, many moons ago. And she describes the shadow as a way to sim symbolize in language the unknown side of personality and give it reality, a means to get hold of and talk about our unknown parts. And according to Debbie Ford, Shadow work refers to this ongoing process of depolarizing and balancing uh, of healing the split between our conscious sense of self and all else we are or might be. So that's just to give you a quick introduction to what the shadow is, what the point of shadow work is, how it ties into our yoni care. So now I'm sure you're wondering, well, how do I do it? So I'm going to share with you three steps to embark on your own shadow work journey this year. So never mind me looking around, I have some notes here. Step one is to meet your shadow. So just like Persephone or the goddess Inanna, you are going to descend into those dark, unknown realms, the realm of the shadow, and meet your shadow. See what's in there. And this can be a little bit um, of a Maybe a, a process that's a little more challenging and maybe frightening because we really don't know what's in the dark, right? But this whole process is really coming home to ourselves. At the end of the day, 
there's just you in there and all the pieces and parts of you. So there's nothing to fear. So a couple ways that we can do this to meet our own shadow is to do some self questioning. And I invite you to grab your journal, grab a pen and paper, write these questions down. And when you have some time, uh, just answer them. So the first question is, what am I most afraid of? The second question is, what am I most afraid that someone else will find out about me? And the third question is, what am I most afraid that I will find out about myself? These are three very powerful questions that can help you to align with your own truth. Those unspoken things that we all know, but we don't really say out loud. We hear them in songs and we love those artists who say the things that we just don't say. But this is an opportunity for you to get vulnerable, get deep with yourself in a safe place in your own journal. You can also, if you are a more visual person, do this in meditation. You can also ask these questions just before you go to sleep at night and allow your subconscious mind to reveal the answers to you in a dream. And um, I invite you, if you do it that way, keep a pen and pad next to the bed so that you can write those things down as quickly as possible when you wake up so that you, you don't forget them. So step one is meet your shadow. Step two is to embrace your shadow. And to do this, we look at the light qualities of ourselves, the things that we want people to see and the things that we're proud of and that we speak openly of. And then you look at those qualities that you don't necessarily want people to know about yourself, the things that you don't always want outwardly revealed and see the beauty in each and every one of them. Hello there, I see somebody's joined. See the beauty in both the light and the dark. And this is so powerful because no matter what your shadow qualities may be, maybe you have dealt with anger. Maybe people tell you you're too sensitive, you overreact, you cry too much, you complain too much. All of these aspects of the shadow have a purpose in our lives. And anger is powerful, it's not bad. Anger can motivate you to protect yourself, to protect the people you love, to take a stand for what you believe in. Whereas if you didn't have that emotion, maybe you would have shrunk back or maybe you wouldn't have had that energy to stand up for yourself. So whether it's anger, whether it's crying, whether it's you know snapping at people, all of this stuff is for a reason. It comes from somewhere, it means something, and it holds value. So if we are willing to embrace those parts of ourselves and see the beauty in them, we can really glean the gems, the, the wisdom, the, the lessons from those things. And so, um, so that's step two. Step one is meet your shadow. Step two is embrace your shadow. And step three is to release. So you want to think about what story have I created about who I really am and what does this reflect? How is this reflected in my current life circumstances, right? So that's the first part. The second part is what am I ready to release at this time in my life? So, you know, the story that we tell ourselves is so important about who we are, why we do what we do, why we're in this career, why we parent the way we parent, why we love the way we love. All of these aspects of our lives have a story. So it's important that we go in and find out why am I telling myself this story? Is this really true? How well is this aligned with my deepest desires? Like, do I really want this or am I living out this story because someone told me or made me feel like I should? Like this is the right thing based on some standard that is outside of me. So if you're in that space, again, this is a beautiful time of year to go and say, you know what? What am I willing to release, to let go of so that I can really step into my own happiness and my own depth as a woman and be free, truly free. So releasing is the third step. And of course, those are my three autumn self-care tips. And I have some tools to share with you. As I said, I'm a provider of certified crystal yoni eggs. So I want to share with you three eggs in particular that I think are really great for shadow work. So the first one, of course, is black obsidian. And all of my black obsidian eggs right now in the shop are drilled eggs. I'm not sure if you can see the hole. Um, and so a drilled egg is simply where you can use a string to add more versatility to your yoni egg practice. Black obsidian is a very powerful root chakra stone. It is for grounding, for purification of your aura. It is also corresponding to the earth star chakra, which is just below the feet and connects us almost like a cord 
to the earth plane. So this is really a powerful grounder. It brings that energy down and grounds it into the physical realm. This is also a great stone to keep your aura cleansed if you are an empath or someone who picks up on, up on a lot of other people's energy or maybe you work with clients all day. This will help you to purify and keep your aura protected and cleansed. And finally, black obsidian is a pulling stone. So it has this pulling, absorbing kind of effect. And so if you sleep with this egg and you might find that you have some really vivid dreams of things that you may or may not have been ready to deal with, they will come up. So if you are ready to dive real deep into shadow work and to, to get in there and find out what's really motivating you, what's driving the way you show up in relationships and the way that you even approach self-care, the way that you think in the story you tell yourself about who you are, Black Obsidian is going to be your number one stone for shadow work. So I invite you to uh, take a look at Black Obsidian and learn more about that. And also, this is a seer stone. A lot of people use Black Obsidian to scry, to actually look into the spirit world, into the realms of the unknown, because it's kind of like a black mirror in a sense. So this is a, a really cool energy to work with. The next stone I want to share with you for shadow work is going to be Bloodstone. Now, in my shop, I have... I believe I have drilled and undrilled bloodstone. And bloodstone is a powerful root chakra stone. Okay, so this is going to help you to balance the root chakra, also the sacral and solar plexus chakra. And the energy behind bloodstone is really purification. Um, it was said to be a blood purifor, uh, purifier uh, for many years. This is also about purifying your will and intent so you can get to the core of what your purpose is. So if you are in that space where you are feeling a little bit disoriented, I think all of us have gone through that because of 2020 just being 2020. Um, and you might be questioning, okay, what's next for me? Like, what am I even doing? Why am I doing all of this stuff? Where am I going in my career? What do I really want? What is my purpose and what do I stand for? What do I stand for? Bloodstone is a way to get back to what your true values are. It is the stone of the spiritual warrior who stands in her truth. And so this stone is very powerful for that. And finally, I'm going to talk about, oh, and before I, I share the, the next stone, bloodstone is also a very uh, good stone for practicalizing your spirituality. So if you are dealing with any type of spiritual warfare or you spend a lot of time in your head and you really want to bring that spiritual wisdom down and apply it in your day-to-day -day life to what you're doing, especially if you're starting a business or starting any type of new project, Bloodstone is excellent for that. So the final stone I want to share with you is Red Jasper. Red Jasper, I have both drilled and undrilled in the shop. Red Jasper is a root chakra stone. And although it is a grounder, it is more of an energizer. So this is, I like to call it the great awakener. You know, if you have dealt with a lot of stagnant energy around your foundation, dealing with trust, um, even finances, this also corresponds to the sacral chakra. If there are issues around sexual dysfunction or sexual hangups, any guilt, shame, anything like that uh, in, your, in your sacral or root chakra, Red Jasper is a way to jumpstart and revitalize and bring strength and bring that fire back to the root chakra to help you balance things out. So um, I currently have a sale on all of my Red Jasper that is still going on. And for all of you lovely people here on Instagram, if you use coupon code IG5 at uh, checkout, you'll get $5 off of your purchase, and that includes sale items. So I invite you to take advantage of the Red Jasper sale. So those are the three stones, uh, Bloodstone, Black Obsidian, and Red Jasper, okay, for shadow work. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that you've um, that I've shared something that can be of value to you. Please be sure to share this with someone you care about if you find that it might be helpful to them. And I look forward to connecting with you on the next video. Until we meet again, remember, you get to choose how you show up in life. So love yourself fiercely, own your story, and say yes to you. Namaste.